Earlier today, I shot my very first roll of Japan Camera Hunter Street Pan 400 and my Pentax 6.7. And since this is the very first time I've shot this film, I wanted to go out and test it out and share my results here. So today, you're going to see every photo I took. But before we take a look at those, I want to take a second to pay some bills and thank our sponsor today, which is Squarespace. Maybe you need a domain or an online portfolio or a place for people to get in touch with you or even buy a print of yours. Squarespace is the best all-in-one platform when it comes to building a website. Everything is really intuitive and easy to use, and all of their templates look really, really great. If you want to try Squarespace out for yourself, you can do so entirely free at squarespace.com, but if you do want to get signed up, I can save you a little bit of cash if you go to squarespace.com slash mattday, and that'll get you 10% off your first purchase. So this film is commonly touted online as just being a really contrasty black and white film, so I wanted to go out and really test that latitude and see you know, if I would lose shadow detail or lose highlight detail if I was shooting in any kind of remotely contrasty scene. But I didn't have a ton of contrast. After the first photo I took, everything just really went pretty flat for a while. And the sun came out a little bit by the end of my walk. I walked a little over five miles just wandering around my town. And uh, it was a little discouraging because everything was really flat for a while. And even you know, as I'm walking around shooting, knowing that I'm shooting for a video like this and knowing that potentially thousands of people are going to see every single photo I take, that tends to get in your head a little bit. So uh, there for like an hour of walking, I didn't take a single shot. I just walked and looked around. But uh, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the photos here. I just scanned everything in using my X-T3 method, which if you haven't seen that, you can check out a card at the top of the screen. But uh, I just scanned everything in and we're going to take a look at everything here. This first photo, I was walking along this alley and happened to come across this scene here where there was this parking lot behind a building. Uh, it was a completely empty parking lot, but I just liked the way the light was hitting the house uh, off in the distance. I liked the line of the fence kind of above the uh, chain link fence down below in the foreground. And I wanted to just kind of get a feel for how this film handled areas that were in the shade and areas that were in direct sunlight, like the side of the building in the distance. So uh, just trying to layer a couple of things, but I was actually really surprised whenever I scanned this in just how much detail there was. I was expecting the scene to be, you know, a lot more contrasty in the scan. I didn't know how well the shadows would hold up, but uh, you'll see in a lot of these photos that uh, while it does have a lot more contrast, you know, than your standard like HP5 at 400, because I didn't push this film, I shot this at 400 and developed it for 400 in uh, Kodak HC 110. So I normally develop an Ilphatec HC, which is a very similar formula, but I couldn't find development times for that, so I just went with a bottle of HC 110. That way I could go off of the recommended development times on the box of film itself. But uh, yeah, really pleased with uh, how much detail there was in this film, both in the highlights and shadows. Next photo here, I really like photos where you kind of have to look somewhat hard to find out maybe whether this is an older photo or a recent photo. So um, I was shooting a photo of the Carlisle building here in Chillicothe, Ohio, which was just uh, completely renovated a couple of years ago. But I wanted to, you know, shoot a photo of a moving vehicle with somewhat of a slower shutter speed. So I shot this at a 30th of a second at f16. And I waited for about 15 minutes before a vehicle that didn't come by that was like, you know, within the last 10 years, I was wanting, you know, something a lot older. So I passed on a couple different opportunities, but this white van was pulling up and uh, I just kind of liked the way it looked. So shot the photo, nothing great, but uh, you can see that the detail on a white van, that held up great. Even the shadows along the building there, uh, pretty surprised by here. You do lose some of the detail in the sky back there, but uh, not that big of a deal. Kind of following the same trend there, I was looking for older cars, and I came across this old car here, and I really liked this old tattered uh, American flag that was on the antenna there. So I walked over there and uh, shot a photo wide open f2.8 at a thousandth of a second, and uh, I really like the way this turned out. I love all of the chrome on the car, like on the uh, bumper there and the reflection in the window. Uh, I really like the way this turned out. The blacks are nice and rich, but there's still detail there along the shadow, even, you know, towards the under, uh, you know, like the shadow underneath the car. So I was happy with this one. Um, and funny enough, after taking this photo, maybe 10 seconds later, someone who uh, owned the car came out and, you know, started working on it. So 
had I been there maybe 10 seconds before or 10 seconds after, I should say, I probably wouldn't have taken the photos. So uh, just kind of goes to show it's all chance out there. I shot this photo here into a reflection of a window. There's a flag of Chillicothe, Ohio hanging in the window there. That's our city's official flag. And uh, I wanted to just shoot a reflection into it. I just kind of liked some of the older buildings. There's, uh, you can see kind of down in the bottom right there, there's a sign for Carl's, which is just this old diner that's been there forever. Um, unless you were, you know, a local here, you probably wouldn't recognize that, but I just like the idea of having the flag there with, you know, some of Chillicothe, actually the focus of the photo there. Um, nothing crazy, just again, walking around and shooting 10 photos and trying to come up with something interesting. Uh, it's not always that easy, but, uh, either way, I, I'm, I'm okay with this one. After the sun started to come back out, I tried to go around and look for, you know, contrasty scenes just for the sake of testing the film. So, but I just wanted to see exactly how much detail there would hold up. And I was actually really surprised because you have a blacktop there with a dark black building and there's actually still detail that you can see, you know, alongside of it. So, uh, this again was shot in direct sunlight with the white house there, but, uh, yeah, turned out pretty good. Similar situation where I was just trying to find a really contrasty scene. So we've got a lot of really dark uh, shadows underneath the awning of this porch here of this old, uh, you know, abandoned house. And on the left side, you can see that was in direct sunlight, but there's still some detail there. It was definitely, get, you know, kind of coming close to clipping those highlights there, but uh, still pretty surprising. It actually held up pretty good and better than I thought it would. This shot here is in front of my friend's bike shop downtown, and he just has this old rusty bike out front just as a display piece, really. But I really like the way that the rust was on this bike, and I wanted to see how that film would handle that. And I feel like the added contrast in this film really works well for things that have this kind of texture to it. So uh, nothing really to write home about in terms of the photo itself, but I do like the way that this film handles that kind of texture. As the sun was starting to set down, I came across this house where they had some kind of like weird plastic over the uh, window on the second floor there. And just with the light hitting it from the sun, the reflection was really, really bright. So I wanted to, uh, you know, kind of stand in a point where it was just blinding, basically. And I underexposed the film by a stop just to really, uh, you know, kind of exaggerate that and almost expose for the sun, you know, on the window there. So uh, the scan itself actually came out a little bit brighter and I brought it down just a little bit just to add that emphasis on the, uh, you know, the really bright reflection there. But still, again, uh, I probably sound like a broken record here, but yeah, I was really surprised by how well this film held up because all I've seen people talk about online is how contrasty it is. And it is a, a you know very contrasty film, especially for a 400 speed black and white, but still, uh, this is a pretty good all around film, I think. And finally, after walking around forever and not really feeling inspired, to be completely honest, I just came home and shot a couple photos of my dogs in the backyard because I do that any chance I get. And uh, it's funny, whenever I was scanning this photo in, I thought, why does it seem like it's like having a hard time, you know, with the highlights on his face? It just seems like it's overdoing it. And then it just hit me that my poor dog Taker is getting really old and those are just the white hairs on his face standing out. And uh, yeah, that's my first dog. He's probably, I would say, about nine. We got him from the pound, so we're not like exactly sure, but he's probably eight or nine at this point and he's, he's getting up there. He's getting older and older by the minute, but that's my boy. And then there's Rusi. She is uh, probably about five right now, I'd say. And uh, she still acts like she's about five weeks old. We also got her from the shelter when she was a puppy, but she is sort of just this uh, hyperactive Tasmanian devil, funniest looking dog ever. But she's sweet. So those are my two dogs. That was the end of the roll. And uh, <laughs> that's that. So that was my very first roll of Japan Camera Hunter's Street Pan 400. Um, I have another roll of this film in 35mm and I'm excited to shoot that, but in 120, uh, this seemed to be like just a pretty good general purpose black and white film. Uh, it definitely has some contrast there, but 
it's way more usable than I expected it to be. Uh, if I'm shooting HP5 and 120, I'm almost always pushing it just to get a little bit more contrast. But uh, for, you know, 120 at 400, I feel like I could see myself shooting this film again uh, for a lot more stuff. I do want to try it out for portraits, so I will probably pick up a roll just for that in mind. But uh, yeah, I'm definitely going to shoot that roll of 35 millimeter uh, even sooner than I planned because I was really happy with the, these results. And uh, I would imagine the grain and maybe the contrast are going to be a little bit more apparent in the 35 millimeter film. But Regardless, I'm excited to test that one out. But that's it for today. Uh, short and sweet, I guess. I hope this was interesting or maybe uh, gave you a little bit more insight into this film. Again, I developed it in Kodak HC 110, dilution 1 to 31, and that was at 68 degrees Fahrenheit for five minutes. And uh, I scanned it on my Fuji X-T3. So that's all of the information I can give you right there. Uh, I hope it was helpful. If you guys have any questions, please leave them down below or maybe share some of your own results that you've got with this film or what you think of it. And any other films you'd like to see me do a similar kind of video on, please let me know. So thank you guys for everything. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next time.